Hey, what's up YouTube? You are watching Ready, Set, Drone. And if you watch this channel a lot, you know that recently I've been flying the GEP RC Rocket Lite and Rocket Plus quite a bit, having a really good time with those two little quads. But today I have a brand new GEP RC quad and we're gonna check it out, so stay tuned. So right here I have the GEP RC Phantom. Now this quad has actually been out for a while, but the difference is this is the Phantom HD, which features the Cadex Vista digital FPV system built into it, ready to go and ready to rock. This is what's called a toothpick quad, which is very small, very lightweight, and primarily used for freestyle flying. This one features brushless motors, the GEP GR1105 5000 kV motors, which are actually different than the original version of this. And oh, by the way, there was an original version of this and still is. It's an analog version that doesn't have the digital FPV system built into it, but essentially the same thing and designed for the same purpose, but now it has the uh, Cadex Vista. It is also really powerful. It'll take a 3S or 4S battery, which gives it amazing power to weight ratio. And it's got an XT30 connector here on the back. It does have the digital FPV system. Now this one, as I said, is the Cadex Vista, which means that it is not designed for local recording. With the DJI one, you actually have a SD slot built into the side of it so you can record locally in 1080. This one will record on the goggles, the DJI goggles, at 720p, but not in 1080 and not locally. So you get any breakup that you'll see during your flight will be recorded in the goggles. But you could very easily put the Insta360 Go onto this quad, which I actually intend to do. I think that'll solve that issue of being able to record 1080. And the Insta360 Go is a stabilized image, so it makes the footage look even smoother than it would just with the uh, local recording in the DJI system. So in addition to being extremely lightweight, this thing is also pretty small, and it is very, very well built, in my opinion. It's very clean. It doesn't have any issue with cable management. You know, a lot of these little tiny toothpick style drones, freestyle drones uh, I've run into have issues where the cables will come out and tend to be in the way of the propellers. And so you'll hear a clicking sound and you have to stop and uh, adjust before you can fly because you don't want to cut any of the cables with the propellers. This one's very just well, well um, groomed as far as putting all those cables into place, tying them all down uh, from the battery cable to where the antenna lays. Um, it does have adjustable um, two little screws here on the side so you can adjust the camera angle if you're gonna fly faster or slower, which is very nice. Um, as I said, it comes with this rubber pad for the battery. It does come with a spare set of props, it comes with uh, a bunch of screws for putting the props in. I will say too, the props are not super easy to get on and off because you have to line these um, screws up, these tiny little screws with the screw holes. And then you also wanna make sure that you put the props in the right places. The way I did that was just turned it on without the props and figured out which way the motors were spinning so I could put the props on the right way. It is tiny, as I said before, and that makes it great for flying just about anywhere. I probably wouldn't fly this indoors. I'd probably stick to the GEP RC rocket for indoors or a uh, Tiny Hawk or something like that, uh, just because they have the um, ducted propellers and they won't hit anything or damage anything. I would imagine once this gets going, it's probably pretty, pretty fast and a little too speedy for indoors. Plus, again, no prop guards, so you're gonna you know, damage whatever you hit. Although it is lightweight and it's really not gonna hurt a whole lot other than you know, maybe scuffing up the wall. But what I really, really love about it, again, is the fact that it has the digital system in it. I have dabbled in FPV for a few years and always struggled a bit because I've had a hard time with FPV dropout when I get too far away or if there's interference, I can't see what I'm flying around. If I get into a tree, I couldn't see any detail. With the digital system, you can see all that stuff and it's so much easier to fly because you have a clear, clear view of where you're going and what the cables look like that you might run into, et cetera. So, I have not flown this guy yet. I'm very excited to get it out. I did do a setup video, which I will link to. Uh, I may put them out at the same time, I'm not sure. But if it's not out already, I'll put a link in uh, soon so that you can see how to set up not only the DJI, not only this guy in Betaflight, but also the DJI digital system all at one time, bind it to the goggles and the radio control, et cetera. So with that, let's get out and fly the digital uh, FPV Phantom from GEP RC and see how it does.
I have learned too that with FPV you definitely need a clean lens. I think you can see that one's not very clean. So fortunately I brought these lens wipes. It really helps uh, with visibility and the recording if the lens is clean. A lot of grass on this one. Okay, so I've had the opportunity to fly a few packs through this thing now, and it is very, very fast. The power to weight ratio, as I suspected, is just off the charts for me as, as a, a sort of um, advanced beginner um, FPV pilot. I have two quick pieces of advice, and they're based on a story that I wanna tell you real quick. First time I fired it up was out in the parking lot here of my office building. There's a shady spot with a tree kind of overhanging I was there, um, probably about 20 feet up was the branch, and I had a 4S on it, first time to fly it. I took off and I went straight up into the branch and got stuck in the tree. I wish I had had the camera rolling at the time, but I didn't. Uh, that was just kind of silly. Um, it just got away from me, went up so fast I couldn't control it and went right into the tree branch before I knew what had happened. Um, so my piece of advice would be, Fly this thing in a big open space without any trees or things to run into. I've crashed it a few times already. It's held up just fine, haven't really nicked the props. Um, and when it did get stuck in the tree, I was able to kind of throttle it around a little bit and it fell out of the tree and I was able to actually uh, put it on a soft spot and some grass. So it didn't damage it. It's held up just fine despite my crashes. But the overall performance of it, if you want to get into flying freestyle, it really is amazing. I mean, uh, my second piece of advice would be start with a 3S battery. Don't go to a 4S. When I put it in the tree, it, was, it had a 4S on it, and then I flew it with a 3S a bit to get used to it, and then a 4S as well. So it can handle a 4S, and you'll get used to that, but really starting with a 3S, this thing is so much more powerful than uh, the little GEP RC rocket that I've been flying recently, and, and so much more... Uh, kind of responsive to the throttle that a 3S in it to begin is a great way to start off. I love the rocket. It's a great little park explorer. This is not a park explorer. This is not a beginner drone for FPV, I don't feel like. It's really a little bit more advanced because it is so powerful and fast, but it's a ton of fun. If you want to get into doing freestyle, doing crazy tricks, um, this is a great thing for it because it's really agile and really versatile. I hope you enjoy this video. If you have a digital system or if you have a GEPRC rocket or a GEPRC Phantom, I'd love to hear your comments below. Even if you don't, if you have questions, be sure to ask. If you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe and we'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone. Thanks for watching.